Okay, so in the last video I published there with the uh, doing the door skins, one thing I neglected to film was the uh, cutting out of the uh, sheet metal around the metal buck. So what I did uh, was I used the paper template and marked where the returns need to be. Then I went and picked up some washers that had 7 16 and 3 8 thickness on the edge of them. And you can just put them down and when you run the marker on them, you can leave a, a line like such as you're tracing it out. So one thing I've got to verify is that I've got the piece of metal flipped over the right way so I can cut it and whatnot. But anyway, so uh, I guess we'll just trim out the sheet metal using my power shears and then snip it out with the uh, tin snips after that. Then we'll have to reattach it to the wood at that point. So always one of our gloves when you're working with metal. Generally when you're working on anything you should wear gloves. These are like tiny little gloves, unfortunately. Which is probably why I took them from work because they wouldn't well, good enough at work. Anyway, so I'm going to cut around the wider edge. So this is the desired width of the panel at the inner edge. Then the outer edge includes the return that's going to get folded 90 degrees. When I trim this out, I need to be about a, a quarter of an inch away from the uh, outer edge so that I can cut it with the snips. Otherwise, they're really not meant to cut any more material than that. for you. This can cut with corners but I'll just do a straight cut for now and then I'll So that's just 18 gauge cold rolled steel. I'm still learning how to use this tool. I think it works quite well. point we got the, uh, the rough shape cut out. So uh, using these snips I gotta remind myself which way they could turn because it's only meant for basically going one direction and uh, it's going to be kind of tough cutting so I probably won't show all of it so let's just take a, a test cut and remember which way it goes. That's right, so the serrated part is what is pushing up and then the other part just sort of stays against the material.
You almost need to use two hands to cut this material, it's so thick. You're always kind of pushing down. You don't want to lift the uh, top off the metal because if you keep pushing it in and lifting it up and whatnot and starting over again, you get a very rough edge with a lot of uh, points on it. So you always leave a bit of weight on it. So anyway, you get the idea of how we're going to cut it out. And uh, so I'll just turn off the video here for a second. We'll snip this around and then we'll uh, start knocking over the edges. All right, so it took a couple minutes, got the uh, piece cut out across uh, the edge of the line. So then you end up with a big piece of metal like that, all coiled up. And uh, so now I'll strap this onto the uh, piece of wood and we'll start uh, to knock over the edges. Okay, so I'll show you uh, the last piece that I made here sitting on top and then uh, what I've got set up to do uh, for the other side. So this is the uh, back of the uh, driver's side. You can see how I folded it over. Then I came back with the shrinker and uh, put a bit of a contour to it. Did the same over here. You'll have to relieve the corner here and the corner here. Otherwise you'll have too much metal. You can't get it to turn the corner. So I'll just do that here quickly. And you just keep taking out a little bit more as you need on the corners. It doesn't need to be perfect on the first attempt, but you know you need to take something off, so you might as well do that. So the first time I did this, I used a, uh, a hammer. I felt it was a little bit late to do the job. So uh, I've got a slapping spoon here. So I'll give uh, both of them a try. Things are sort of set up the wrong way for a right-handed person to film it. So I'll just flip the camera around. And this will probably take a bit of time. But the important part is that you are slapping down. I'm going to get a dolly to support the corner. I'll do a video on these uh, dollies at another point. I don't have the uh, part numbers on me. Obviously not going to use that side. But if you have this resting here and you're slapping down, it's less likely to pop up on the flat surface. And I showed a video of that with uh, the vise earlier. So when I did it initially, I used this guy. You can make a bit of a, a mark on it. Bring this down a little bit. This table is not really ideal either because it springs around quite a bit. That's what I got, so that's what we're using. I'm starting to make a line. It's going over the edge here a little bit. So now let's try with the uh, slapper. I could feel it was starting to lift here, which I had that problem before with the corners. I'll say that this uh, spoon hasn't been ground down yet, so it has a sharp edge on it. 
and I'm seeing that turning up on the uh, panel. This is a low crown hammer and it's not quite as bad on the edges but it was leaving a mark as well. So something to think about. This is the first time we've ever used this tool. I've never struck anything else with it before. So I'm about a, as amateur as you can get with this. Everything is falling on the floor behind me. So anyway, I'm going to uh, stop the video for a little bit, play around with this a little until I get myself a little more comfortable with it. And then uh, we'll cut back in for another scene. Alright, so we're making some pretty good progress. I'm starting to like the uh, slapping spoon. You can hit with quite a bit more force than the uh, other hammer. So I'm just trying to knock over this corner. But this is where you start having to uh, shrink. i got to flip this over and make the uh, outer radius come in. So I've got to keep beating the tucks back and forth. When I go around this corner here, the contour is the opposite side of the circle. So here I just have to stretch it. And uh, stretching I find is probably quite a bit easier. So we're not gonna film that right away. I guess I'm gonna keep working on the corner here for you to show you the progress back and forth. So it's kind of like whack-a-mole. You kind of trying to, every time a tuck pops up, you gotta beat it back into submission. definition of the corner here as well. When you take this off of the wood you can use a, a metal dolly like this one in the behind here and keep working on it but the uh, better you can get the corner now the less work it is later. One trick you, you'll see I've marked the uh, face of this is that you have to keep the dolly further back when you're slapping on here. So it can create a little bit of difficulty. We'll have it beaten into submission now. At uh, where we're at now. So I started with a flat piece of metal just a couple of minutes ago and uh, see if we can show you the tucks or not. So it's resurfaced right here and then you're tapping on it, pops out over here. So there's not a lot to see but uh, that's the fighting of trying to get it to shrink around the corner. At the same time, having the uh, wooden form to work against is quite helpful. If you were doing this freehand just with a dolly, you could probably do it if you had more skill. 
but I think this is a good way for a beginner to start and then uh, eventually you can get away with it without it rather so if you've seen the David Gardner videos he does it with uh, different things he holds in his hand basically makes it look easy but he's probably ten times stronger than me and a thousand times more experienced so uh, this is the way we're going to go for uh, this vehicle and hopefully when I've done the vehicle I'll know how to do it quicker thank you okay so I guess we'll finish up the video here with a bit of stretching going around the corner here sorry again for the lighting it's been quite a struggle trying to figure this out in this shop Eventually we'll have it figured out, just like doing the body work. So what I did at the beginning was kind of cheated and lifted this up and just hit all the way around. But I do want to support it with a dolly. That's uh, the better way of doing it. See the uh, marks that the uh, edges of the uh, slapper are putting on it. So we'll put that aside. I'll say that it's a bit harder, I guess if you put your finger on it you can get a bit more control, but uh, it's more tiring using the spoon initially until you build up your muscles. So I pretty much used up. I was able to get this part fairly easily, but as we get into the tighter part, I don't think I'm going to be able to use the spoon. So I just See, it's much easier from a physical effort point of view. You don't need as good of a work surface. So anyway, you can see it's very easy to stretch around a, a corner like this. Find the edge a little bit more by tapping. You want to be pushing it down. It felt like there was something going wrong here. I kind of fold it over before it was in against the wood. So I'm going to tidy this up on another evening. I kind of run out of time for today, but hopefully you're able to see that it doesn't take much skill to make uh, flat panels. It's quite easy. When it comes to making the uh, compound curves, it's going to be a little more effort. You will find though when you take this off of the wood that the panel might be a little bit wavy because you've gone and taken metal and bent it over, but you should be able to tidy that up. So uh, thanks for watching.